it's time to do every single Chaos Marines chapter ranked. Black Legion. Their color scheme overall, I think, is just solid. Yeah, what it's, color scheme? It's black. S or is it going A? I, it has to go S. It doesn't look very like scary to me. Blue bird men. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, um, they are an S tier. Absolutely not. No You're chance. Going S -tier. No. So, I heard you've done some painting, Joe. Rare occurrence. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, I will submit pictures for proof. Um, so that I don't get called a liar. It's not a lot of painting, but it's something. It's a lot for me. Um, we haven't seen the proof yet. So for all I know, this is giving you a couple of days between <laughs> yeah, when I edit this video to yeah. slap something together. Yeah, uh, I'll do a little bit more in the time that uh, in the time that I before I submit it to you. But um, yeah, I've been playing Underworlds a little bit more often, so it's kind of spurred me on to paint. And I know we've spoken a little bit about having a reason to get models done or an army done or whatever, and. Mm -hmm. That's definitely helped with me. It's a cool little cycle, really, because it's like I picked that warband to use at first because I really like the models. Which, which warband is it again? It's the um, Null Spirit Pack, I think it's called. I know it's from the Nullwood uh, expansion. Is that like the Slaves to Darkness one? Yeah, they're kind of like the tribal. They fit in with like the Dark Oath um, thing that was revealed recently, pretty much. It's that kind of vibe. Um, and I thought they looked really cool. Um so I started learning the game with those and I've enjoyed playing with them. So now it's cycled back around to like, okay, I do want to paint them then. Um, so yeah, I got like the skin tones done. It's, uh, they've all kind of got, uh, I'm saying to Jules, like it's like, there's, um, it's one of those sets of models where there's no real obvious first airbrush layer because mm. there's no real dominant single color on a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them have got like their shirts off, but then they've got like cloth, uh, bottoms and then they've got like little bits of armor like metallic armor panels and stuff so I didn't airbrush a base uh, a base color at all really I just uh, primed it and then went in with the with the brush and everything so I've done the skin tones also they've got like different skin tones between them I'm trying to do it as close to the box art as possible so um, so that in itself is like even between themselves they've got different base coats on their skin and stuff like that so um yeah, I've done like the base coats and the shades for the skin, the metal, and started on all the bone as well. Um, been really enjoying it, actually. Um, nice little, fi finally, an actual bit of hobby progress from me. 40, what is it, episode 44 or 46. something? 46, <laughs> 46 episodes, yeah. Um, yeah, so there you go. I've done some painting. Nice. Enjoy it, and I'll update you again on episode 80. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> James, how many dozen tanks have you painted? I haven't, actually. I have finished. How many dozen tanks have you bought um, since the last episode? So someone did turn up at the class element a week or so ago. Oh, and, I, was, I was setting and, him up for like a joke. And, and then what does he do? Um, I may maybe slipped and purchased uh, a, a Forge World Bane Blade that became available. Um, and the person didn't live too far from Element and they delivered it to me. But but apart from that, I've painted, I've finished the crew, oh, okay. the crew Shaper. Um, uh, the, crew sha <laughs> the Crew Shaper is finished. I, I have got the Crew Shaper finished finally. Um, I know, I'd, I'd said I'd get it done and I really wanted to. Um, no more mention of of, of Bane Bay, please. Um, yeah, so, uh, I'm just walking down the street, yeah. tripped and fell. I my, you... phone, my phone landed on the floor and it called this number that just so happens to be the guy who had the four draw Bane Blade. <laughs> and he just sort of, interpreted that it was me and then like of a, his own free will decided to come to the store that he happened to know that was yeah. going to be at the specific time that we'd arranged. Like a bat signal he just turned up yeah, yeah. Element, not the, the, a bane blade in the sky. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Quite funny little thing earlier actually. George walked in uh, to James's office and James was ordering a tank on eBay for a job and it was like the instant moment of like you going another tank <laughs> it's not for me it's for a job yeah yeah. Um, you walk in and he's on the computer screen it's not what it looks like it's not yeah, what it looks yeah. like yeah it's not what it looks like no um, minimising the tabs really quickly yeah, yeah. I, I I had uh, a really damaged um, a really damaged it needs a lot of work uh, for your bane blade um, and it, and it's it's really haggard and this one is literally pristine like it's been sitting on the, the chap shelf for a couple of years and it's it's actually quite funny because it's there was the Lucius pattern and the Mars pattern and the one that's really damaged that I've got is the is the Mars pattern but this one's the Lucius one which I really prefer so so yeah I, I, I just yeah I, that's kind of like I've always I always wanted one when I was a kid couldn't afford one and then and then yeah like having one as a centerpiece of the Mordian army is um is really kind of what I wanted it for but yeah I, I digress I 
I, I have finished the Creature Shaper finally. Just back onto this tank for a little bit. Oh. Um, the, <laughs> I, I thought I thought you meant um, I thought you meant that someone who was on the class. Yeah, I thought I was just going turned to. up with a tank and thinking it'll James will want this. He'll, he'll probably, probably want buy. this. Oh no! Yeah. I mean that'd be that'd be amazing. That but no, might be a good it? tip for anyone if you are trying to sell any tanks, any Forge World. If you're uh, struggling to move your Forge World tank for a yeah, reasonable just price, turn up. At, uh, you know, buy a ticket. Obviously, you'll probably uh, make your money back, um, and just sell all your tanks to James on the on the thing. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of why he built Warboot, I suppose, isn't it? To buy tanks. To buy tanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it's done now. We we are all tanked out, and that, and I can confidently, adamantly, what a load of nonsense! Don't even say it. Say it. That Don't is, even say it. Yeah. I'm trying to say, trying to deflect it. I have finished the Coot Shaper. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, the Coot Shaper is finished. I've I've really wanted to get that one done because I, I love the color scheme. Um, and it was just a shame I couldn't get it done in time for the crew episode. But uh, but yeah, he he is done, and I'm I'm really really happy with the model. Uh, it was super super fun to do. Uh, just Credit to James because the listeners will be hearing these quite a few weeks apart. We are pre-recording this episode. It has not been four weeks yeah. since yeah. that episode. Yeah. yeah, we're still we're on the last pre-record now. So we'll from next week we'll be back. Yeah, we'll be to back normal. to normal. Back yeah. to normal. So so yeah, but um, yeah, he was great to paint. Just next time, don't spend so much on time on the base. So, yeah. So, yeah. We'll oh, spend more time painting instead of uh, spending your time ordering models off of eBay. You probably get something finished. Um, it uh, took seconds. Um, a so, few people uh, commented about that Space Marine part as well. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I everyone with a different answer. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. about to yeah. say the the unanimous one seemed to be that it was from a badon. It's not. No, it's it, most it's, people were saying it was from. a Was badon. it unanimous? Not, I saw no. every single comment. I saw so it mo most people that I saw were agreeing it was from the Abaddon kit. It's but not. But then it's also it could be from. Bell and it's it could not. be from Harkon World. It's from none of those. No, so the part that I used is actually from the new possessed. So that's oh, where it's from. Yeah. I, I don't know. There was, didn't even know that one. Yeah, one of the one of the possessed has got a dead space marine for the base. Yeah. So I I did. So yeah. So thank you. I can't remember for love nor money who the person was uh, that uh, commented saying it was a possessed kit, but it is in fact from the mm. possessed kit. Was you just bits hunting, or did you have the possessed? No. Kit? When I saw people commenting on it, I was like, I really just from my own. No, no, I mean, how did you come by it originally? Because I haven't seen you paint any possessed. Uh, I think, I think it was in the bits box, in one of the bits boxes in the office, and I think oh, okay. I just, I just, uh, just raided it, permanently just borrowed it. it. Yeah, yeah. Nice. so I permanently borrowed it. Can't get it back now. It's got Perks of the job. Yeah, yeah. So into so, a yeah. bits box. Yeah. As artists, we know how time-consuming painting miniatures is, especially if you want to achieve a high standard for tabletop or display. Life is busy, and we don't all have eight hours a day to paint. Plus, if you're still early in your painting journey, it may feel that you're a long way off ever owning your own beautiful army for your games. For 10 years, Siege Studios has been delivering bespoke miniature painting commissions to collectors and gamers all over the world. We have a world-class team of artists from Golden Demon winners to ex-studio painters, collating hundreds of years of collective experience. Here at Siege, we offer a series of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget, whether you want a favorite character for your display or a stunning gaming army. We pride ourselves on offering well above the industry standard of quality and our customer experience. To see our gallery, learn more about our services and get a quote now, head over to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Okay, so we have done every single Space Marines chapter ranked. It's time to do every single chaos marines chapter ranked so fun one this week we've got all of the officially supported gw uh chaos war bands when i say officially supported these are the ones that are on gw's website and they happen to have models currently for 40k or models painted in these schemes so i'm calling that like official there are some others we would be here all day so same way as we've done for the Space Marines. We could do, similar to what we want to do with the Space Marines, actually, we could do like a second There'll probably be a follow-up. With some, yeah. some of the other ones. On that note, if anyone has watched the Space Marines one that we did, if you'd like to comment what chapters you'd like us to include in a part two of that, then that'd be quite helpful. I yeah, think. that'd yep. be good. Sweet. So it's on the screen now for the listeners. We've got a few down the bottom here. We're going to do these in kind of a semi-random order, I think. And uh, go through these. James, do you want to give us the law pitch? What have we got first of all? The Iron Warriors. Uh, the Sons of Olympia. Um, a brilliant warband legion, whatever you want to call them. Um, I think that for me, they're just very cold, merciless. Obviously all about the fitting for us as a business that a siege orientated uh, war band or legion. You have a bit of a history with the, uh, with the Iron Warriors, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. I had an army that I had for quite some time. Um, go, go back. We'll have to, I'll link the episode in the description of this. We told this story on a past episode. It is wild. It's isn't mental. It? Yeah. Does I think it, we actually, we did a clip of it as well, but yeah, I'll find the actual episode. Yeah, we'll find that and link it below. Jane, 
James had his army stolen. It was wild. So yeah. yeah. So long story short, I sold it. It got stolen as a porch theft in the States, the person I sold it to, and then it got crushed in the back of a dust cart. So that was, uh, that was fun. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, quite fitting that they're, they're pre naming the, the name of the, of the iron warriors before, um, before they became the iron warriors was the corpse grinders. So it's a full circle for, for the models on my part. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, obviously also the person that stole them was a fan. Clearly he wanted to give them a proper send off yep. as they would appreciate. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So Perturavo, obviously the part Primark or otherwise known as Pete Turbo, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a really, really cold, merciless, um, bitter kind of evil uh, uh, legion or warband, whatever you want to call them. Um, if you like hazard stripes, have we got the warbands for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, uh, well, so the, the, the Primarchs are awesome, like really, really merciless, kind of like cold, uh, very sort of like bitter, evil uh, Primarch, which I've always, I've always liked something about. Perturabo, I don't know. Um, I think it's these Gauntnet guns as well, which are quite cool. I've got like, these awesome Gauntnet weapons. I'm reading the Siege of Terror at the minute and I've just gotten to the third book, which is a great series, by the way. But uh, yeah, I didn't realise that he was one of the like lesser maniac uh, Primarchs. You could, you could say semi-sane. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Well, yeah. in his own, I mean, he by anyone- The bar is low. Yeah. 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 He, <laughs> he seems sane because everyone else is so mental. Yeah. Yeah. By any normal metric, he's a lunatic. Yeah. He, but, just, he just hates everyone. Like, yeah. He just hates everyone. Um, so yeah. Um, for me, I think uh, because I have a bit of a history with with the range or, or the, the, the wall band, for me, I'm going to place it as an A tier because I think they're really cool. I do like them. And I think the metallic scheme is, is really fun for painting as well. Like that splash of yellow and black with Quick the Quick for painting. You got very grim dark a ball, I'd yeah. say. Is mm. that a term? Grim dark I'm making it yeah. a term. Yeah. yeah. Are they, um, it, well, you say, it's, you say quick for painting, but it's like, if you want them to be legit, you're doing hazard stripes all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, but you save so much time by doing the metallic, because if we talked about an episode, that we had a past episode where it was ways to paint your army faster and better. One of the things in that was to do the root of metallic color schemes because they're more efficient. Yeah, I think, I think- So you can, t you can use that time saved Invest I, that time I, into the hazard stripes, then you're gonna have a really cool, unique looking arm. I do yeah. think they look cool, like, yeah. and I'm not usually particularly a fan of like full metallic schemes. I'm um, also not, for the record. But yeah, I, th I think they're really good because you've got that metallic, which you can do obviously the weathering and the bits and bobs, or you can have them clean if you want. Not that it fits in my mind the aesthetic of the of the Legion of the Warband. They should. They don't care about the equipment. They're all about the slog and just like obliterating people through like prolonged co prolonged engagements. Like through, obviously through siege in like fortresses and things like endurance. that endurance yeah. yeah so so like i yeah for me i think painting wise they're a top top uh chaos wall band or livery to paint um and i think they're not my favorite but i think yeah i think an what, a, a tier for me what are some of the like models available specific to them is Pete there Turbo or per yeah well Turbo? in, in that's so obviously only like 40K. 40K. Is only in 40K terms of 40k like? i had a quick look the only one you've got is the warp smith yeah the, the og, oh, the OG metal one yeah yeah which is um, painted as an mm -hmm. Iron Warrior. Or you, you're not talking about the OG metal one. No, with no, the, no. With the claw. No, the new yeah, one. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's, yeah, he's cool. That yeah. But I guess awesome. that isn't specific to them. There it's was also, as... there was also a tank that I found that was painted in Iron Warrior. Is it a oh, okay. Predator? I think so. Yeah. 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 It is a it is a cool scheme. We've done plenty over the years. Yeah. Um, seen some really cool ones come through. Yeah. Um, I like the I A like, feels high. I don't want to kick it straight off with an argument, but A does feel high. I think it's fitting for them as a as a. As They're a, cool, but are they like? Are I, I they guess like a main main. Top, I guess that's kind one? of how I feel about like all of them in their own way. I, I guess spoilers. There, yeah, there is a bit of bias on my part because I did collect them and paint an army and had it. it I painted uh, one before. Yeah. It was good fun. I like the yeah. hazard stripes. I I, I, I think they are A. You know, I think because I just think they've got. A lot of cool little things. Their organisation. They're not. They're they're not praetors. They're not captains. They're called war smiths. The thing to their detriment at the minute is they're not particularly well supported. So they haven't got anything like. You're gonna have to go in pretty kit bash heavy, I think. So that's what makes it more fun from a from a modelling and painting. But in terms of an accessibility standpoint, yeah, no, is how true. I'm sort of hitting that. I guess that's kind of a pro. They, they just don't don't excite me as much as some of the others. I think A would be a push. I think if I'm saying B, I'm happy, James to, I'm saying happy, a, I'm happy to go. I'm happy to go B with them. I could maybe. go B. Yeah. yeah, could go B. You can talk yeah. me into a B. Yeah, we can go. Oh, there we go. We can go B. Um, who have we got next? That T Sons, Thousand Sons, the the Sons of Prospero, Magnus Red, probably the the craziest magician in existence. Um, uh, uh, just what can I say? 
really big shame, obviously, that nearly all of the Legion or Warband turned into dust, obviously, through the rubric of Araman. Um, but they have got some really cool characters like Aaron, for example, um, and obviously Magnus. They've got their own infantry as well. Yeah. One of yeah. the few... Cult troops. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is quite cool. And and also, it's the first of the Chaos Legions or Warbands that actually is aligned with a specific Chaos God. Obviously, um, Iron Warriors are, are undivided, so they basically can align with any Chaos God, whereas Thousand Sons are our best friends uh, with, obviously, uh, Zinch. So, Just so, yeah. to jump ahead a little bit on that note, this was kind of difficult to build up because the way GW currently does this is you've got like their main poster boys for each Chaos God, and then you've got a couple of other extra ones that just happen to have some models. So like uh, Emperor's Children has got like Fabius. That's kind of it. Yeah. And then they're like the Noise Marine. Whereas the other ones, so like Death Guard have got their own, they're kind of like their own army. Yeah. A Thousand Sons fits into that category as well of having like, they've got their own unique units, their own characters, their own full full spiel. Maybe yeah. maybe not as much as some of the others because like, I think the thing with A Thousand Sons is that you can have so many demons as part of the force because that's what they, they heavily yeah, rely on. So you really, like they don't need as many kits because they've got so many demonic entities that they can take on the battlefield. And and I think from a painting perspective of it as well, like you can do so much with it, like the Zinchian colors, so pinks, blues, etheric purples, things like that. Like you can put that across the infantry uh, and, and the demons and, and really make it quite a quite I really awesome. like the like core units that they've got, like the Rubric Marines are yeah. classic. I, I Even love... like the Zangors, I know I've a bit disliked because they're pushed quite heavily in terms of the box sets, but like aesthetically, I think Zangors are sick. They're yeah. really cool. Yeah, they are cool models. I love the look of, of Thousand Suns um, stuff. I think, I think it does look, it's a very cool design. It's mm. quite unique when it comes to, it's weird because it's like they managed to look unique while also... Fitting Still in. fitting in as, with the chaos stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not like a complete departure. Um, but yeah, I, I really like them. I think they're cool. And I think in terms of having a Primark model in 40k, yeah, Magnus is pretty good. Yeah. How I, I, we'll speak about them individually, obviously, when we get to them. Yeah. In terms of the uh, available Primarchs, how do you rate Magnus against the others? In terms of 40k, sure. Yeah. What well, in terms of just a model or? Yeah, we'll go just as a model. Um, I it's not my favourite one. Mm. Um, I do really like I do really like the Magnus model. To be fair, and I like that there's some there's at least some options on there. Yeah, um, you can customise him to a certain extent. We did a custom service one that I really liked. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, that made it look very cool. Um, and the, the essence of his original model was still there as well. Yeah, yeah. we added a lot of stuff around it. it wasn't like we completely reposed it or anything. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not my favourite. It's not, but it's up there. What about you? Um, yeah, I suppose they're all kind of in a similar. They're all feel a bit similar, I guess, in terms of them being like giant demons. So they're mm. all kind of fulfilling a the same task, I guess. They're all kind of ticking the same box. They're not like especially like the big wings and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess put it like pretty middle of the road. Yeah, I guess. I. I, I... It's not my. I, I I always juggle this between the two. Like I do like the Magnus model massively. Something about Mortarian model that I prefer. I don't know we'll, why. We'll get to that. In a yeah, bit. we'll get to yeah. that. We'll I'll try not to try around worry. that too much. Don't yeah. worry. Well, he'll 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 be um, up. But I would say like my favorite part about T Suns is the the characters and the like like the Rubik Marines and all that. Yeah, yeah, I think I just like the general vibe that there's not many um, armies that are so centered around the kind of psychic magic type feel like uh, there's a lot of like sorcery and stuff in there isn't it especially yeah. with the characters and you have the um the like exalted sorcerers pack and yeah stuff they're, like they're that. brilliant they're um, great models um i think from, from painting wise they just have such a there's such variety in what you can do with them as, a, as an army and as a faction i think that yeah i think that that if my take on it is just the, the from the painting side of things like i yeah, I think there's a lot you can have. Well, just to rewind with. us as well, that is how much like in the Space Marines episode, that is how we're going to be doing all of these. Is more from a uh, painting, modeling kind Most of Most of it, yeah. I think large. it is an overall We're not going to get to rules or anything like that. Yeah, 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 gaming is probably the least of our worries with this stuff, but like painting and some law and just general vibe and, and design and stuff is where we're going, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, right? where are we going to put these? I would go like, I, I would probably put them in at eight. They're like a staple, cool, good... Chaos I'll agree with that. I think they're thing. on par, at least with the Iron Warriors that we've already done. So, 
Well, I would, that that's kind of how I'm going. Is I would I would say they're better because I would put them in A and we'll. I think put them I think B, because so. if we're talking this from the, from the perspective of painting, because they have factually more things open to them as a as a, as a range, and there's a lot more that, that you can does help them on. as well. Yeah. I, I think yeah, I think A is where I would probably put them. I think there's going to be a few people quite disheartened that they're not an S tier thing. So quite a big popular one, aren't they? I guess. Um, I, I wouldn't know really to be honest because my painting circle is quite. I guess insular, so quite uh, loyalist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah quite loyalist. Yeah, um, yeah. They're they're like they're pretty. You know, they're they're a staple one. I wouldn't be a get if if one of you had come out and been like overly, comf- like overly uh, obsessed with them and want them in an S. I wouldn't be against it. But yeah, I think A A is good. Um, what we got next? Em- what we got next? Emperor's Children. Ooh, you want to give us a bit of a rundown? Yeah, uh, the only legion to wear the Aquila, uh, the Emperor's sigil or mark, which is quite a quite a big thing uh, for them. Um, he gave it to the to them, and then obviously they turned traitors. So that's not obviously a good uh, good good thing. We see Fulgrim Primarch, um, and they come from a planet called Chemos as well. So um, they're all about perfection. If anyone who, who doesn't know too much about them, um, obsessed, you could say uh, obsessed. Yeah, slight obsession. Yeah, um, align themselves with Slanesh as well. So probably not. Not my favourite of the of the of the chaos gods. Colour scheme is sick though. Obviously purple, um, really cool colour scheme. Um, I'm going to interject because technically talking about the chaos gods does not foreshadow any of these. Slanesh is probably my favourite one purely because my favourite model from the range. Keeper of Secrets. Keeper of Secrets. I knew this was coming. Yeah, true. I mean, Keeper of Secrets is a cool model. Um, technically, it's not Emperor's Children though. It's just, no, but that's Slanesh. That's why I was piping in there. Wasn't yeah, that? I suppose so. Um, I really like Emperor's Children. I think that they've got, quite, obviously they've not got the most varied of ranges currently. And obviously we hope in the future that they do get the same lavish treatment that like others have. Um, They're kind of tiptoeing around it, aren't they? Because you've got Fulgrim's a relative, uh, Fabius Bile is a relatively new model mm-hmm. yeah. um, in plastic. Yeah. I and mean, they've got that, they've got that new noise marine, didn't they? The, yeah, yeah. I feel like that, you can't really count that. I'm not counting it as such, but it's kind of an acknowledgement of their existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. I mean, I, I, I think they, it's really hard for me. I, I think that they have probably some of, some of my favorite characters from the Legion. So like, obviously you've got fa- uh, Fabulous Bill or Fabulous Bile, um, but I, I absolutely love Lucius as a character. I think the whole thing with Lucius as a character is, is awesome. Like the way he just doesn't die, comes back to life. If someone kills him, he comes back to nah, life. From a modeling standpoint though. No, yeah, yeah but, but, but we've cast. done we've done quite a few quite a few. We've done obviously a, a CS version or a custom service version for Lawrence at TT. We've obviously had a couple of custom service versions of Lucius we've done. Um, I just think that the mo- the character and the model like it, it is just such an integral part to Emperor's Children. And uh, when you think about them, it um, is one that I would be. I'm quite excited for an eventual yeah redo. Yeah, really? I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. Very I excited. think they could do something quite cool with 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 that. Mm. Just, just again, based on like. Um, based on what they've done with certain other characters um, and chaos models and stuff. Have you got a favourite character from a book or piece of artwork and thought to yourself, if only that had a miniature? Custom Service is our character creation brand here at Siege Studios. Custom Service is not just a kit bash. We create miniatures using traditional hand sculpting alongside conversion for entirely unique and bespoke miniatures that will blow you away. Our talented team of sculptors methodically and meticulously bring your thoughts into reality with the precise, refined and sharp work you'd expect from a digital sculpt and pair that with our world-class painting team for an incredible display piece you'll be proud to own. To bring your character to life and get a quote now, head to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. I think I, I the, the, a lot of the newer Chaos models, I feel like... I get excited and think they look cool, even if it's just like, oh, it's just a normal new Chaos model. Do you know what I mean? I've always just thought the Chaos stuff in general was quite cool. Mm. Um, we were talking about that new Chaos Lord. I know we didn't really discuss it fully on the podcast. There was a new Chaos Lord revealed a little while ago. Um, was it at Adepticon? Yeah. Is that Chaos yeah. Lord? And it's like, most people were like, oh, cool. It's like new Chaos or whatever. And I'm like, that looks sick. I love it. Like, So I think, yeah, uh, it's easier to tick my boxes with... Uh, chaos stuff so most of the old characters coming back I'm, I'm quite excited to see but yeah I think that'd be a cool one I, I think for, for painting as well the colour scheme the gold and purple and like using accents of like t- of turquoise and things like, I think there's lots of things you can do with the, with the painting of it um, that just make them as a as an army 
really interesting and i love like the older style of like the black and pink as well i think that looks really great like that high contrast between those two mm. colors but with really cold kind of like highlight stages on the black i think it just i think for me the overall scheme and everything just just really sells it. i mean it's for me it's it's one of my one of my favorite um of of the actual color schemes i actually prefer the 30k purple than like the the pink 40k pinkish yeah. situation yeah. yeah so i was just gonna say actually We've done a few, we get asked for this like every now and then. I've seen other people do it. Where does the the kind of skin tone one come from? Like a lot of people do like a... Well, it's either purple, like original, yeah. or it's bright pink, or it's that like fleshy... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like yeah. where do people do like the pale flesh, like where that pale flesh looking armor, like where you do like kind of, and then like pink in the in the recesses and stuff, like we did for, the, for Lawrence's... Um, Lucius. Yeah. Where does that come from? Is that an actual thing or is that just people start doing it because it looks cool, it fits with a chapter or? I don't, to be honest, I think that there's some earlier Empress Children models that they, they the one thing that Games Workshop did in the past, they did do metal sets of miniatures. So there are metal like uh, faction specific uh, ranges of things. I'm, I'm quite sure that I think one of those early sets, the metal sets, had the armor kind of similar to that. And so that I think, like flesh I think, look. And then that flesh look, I think that's where it came from. Plus also the original OG Fabulous Bile um, has... He's mixed both the names. <laughs> Fabulous, yeah. Bile. Fabulous, Fabulous Bile. Fab- Fabulous Bile, yeah. They have um, they have the that kind of fleshy color on, on his cloak, cape that he's got. I think yeah. that fleshy color is cooler than the pink. Personally. Yeah. I, well, it I makes get, more sense. It, it's, it, it looks really cool, especially we touched on it on a roundup a little while ago where we did a... Um, uh, uh, Fabius Bile that had like a really realistic flesh cloak on it. And I think it looks cool on like the cloak and stuff like that because it's like, yeah, that's supposed to be skin stitched together. Um, on the armor, I'm not sure. I just wasn't sure where it came from. It looks cool, but I wasn't sure where it came from, like whether it was an official thing or it seemed like a, enough people do it that there must have been some kind of official. Yeah, I'm not sure where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't it, see it as like a replicating flesh as a material. I just see it as like color that's well, flesh. Well, I, I, I kind of see it as like they've got the pinky purple armor and they've covered their armor in flesh. Yeah, I, I kind, kind of, of like how I see it. it was like supposed to be like, like, like yeah. flesh was stretched over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess it depends how it's been painted and depends what the models are specifically. Yeah, yeah. But as a, as a, just a color concept, I think it's quite nice. Yeah. yeah. I also realized that I totally got their, their home world wrong. It's Chemos, not Colchis. I just realized that while I was thinking about oh. it. But yeah. yeah. People have already left but, the comments, James. Yeah, yeah, well, around. It's, it's, yeah, well, anyway, we can just rewind that bit. Luton anyway. watching fuming. Yeah. 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 Have I taught you nothing? I'm so sorry, Luton. So for me, I've got to say it's because they are the the war band of perfection um i'm going straight in with they are an s tier absolutely not no chance i'm going s no i'm going s i was gonna say a just because i I think i would put them on par with with thousand sons for me overall but i I, you know where, where are we at i'm i'm going to acknowledge my biased opinion because i'm kind of jaded about the empress children because I had a massive, massive army project that I was painted for them. Yeah, but think and of the I didn't Keeper have a good Secrets. Time doing it. Think of the Keeper of Secrets. Do you like her? <laughs> yeah. Or the, them? I don't know what... It. Or, yeah, I don't know what... It's a demon, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so. uh, yeah but... Uh. S tier all day long. All day long. Because the thing is, the range is pretty interesting now as it is. Imagine how good it's going to be when they get like the treatment that other, other uh, legions have had. Or the other, it's, they're going to be no, amazing. I can't yeah. judge stuff based but on promises. That's what you haven't. do for the Blood Angels. You're like, oh, imagine how you're like, yeah, the Blood Angels suck now, but imagine how great they're going to look yeah. in I ten years with the Blood Angels. Never say the Blood Angels well, suck. Uh, you see. bought into that and started an army of them. No, I didn't. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because I started my start. army now. If I'd have bought into that, I would have waited for the new ones to come. Don't out. Don't start mm. that conversation. Yeah, mm. look, look I, I genuinely think they're S tier. I think that they are. You know, and for everyone watching, anyway, I'm fighting the fight. I just here. think looking ahead for me, knowing what I'm gonna want to put in S tier. I wouldn't put them next to what I'm going to suggest. Personally, yeah, I, I won't go any lower than an A tier then because they are, I think they're amazing. I, mean, I would go A. Way. I would go A. I think A is, is I think is, a, we have God, to agree. B's pushing it for me. No, but B's we, pushing yeah, yeah, it. You're, outvoted, you're outvoted here, George. It's got to be A tier for I'm sorry. A it's does be... kind of meet in the middle of the, the range of all of I'll, us. I, I, I acknowledge the democracy. If you want to go A. Yeah, go a. I think in the, in the, yeah, in the spirit of not having an argument, let's go. With A. I wonder if there's going to be any that we like, um, that like people get as annoyed with us about as uh, Raven Guard. Yeah. <laughs> so there's quite a lot of people that weren't too happy about that. 
Um, it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun, everyone. Yeah. What have we got next? Well, with that being said, the next one for me is going to the bottom of the pile. And I'm going to say that straight away. <laughs> I hasn't even named them yet. Any, I was just saying, like, everyone, don't worry. Like, don't get too heavy. No, yourself. James is like, no, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, anything that is affiliated, associated, or has any blood connection with Erebus can go in, <laughs> can go in D tier straight away. The, 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 the actual. You haven't said who it is yet. It is the one and only word bearers, the sons of Colchis. The sons of Lorgar Aurelian, the worst Primarch in existence. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I absolutely hate word bearers. I think that they are the <laughs> the worst. I they, can't believe they are. I'm sorry to say this, but they are the most boring legion ever. Yeah, Erebus. Erebus. Is, uh, anything associated is, with Erebus can just can just go away. Like honestly, they are the I, worst legion. I honestly. Ever. Don't really know anything about. Have you read them. the Heresy books? That's no. how boring they are. Like, yeah, I don't really like, know. Well, I love the whole like, like they <laughs> saying that they're boring because they like read books all day or something. And I'm saying, oh, I don't really know much about them. You're like, well, have you read the books? Yeah, but if you'd read if you'd read the Horus Heresy books, you would know that Erebus is a class A. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Absolutely. Well, I know that from conversations that we've had before. Yeah. Um, like, but sometimes, sometimes I gravitate towards a character like that. You know, sometimes I see a bit myself in. <laughs> <laughs> if you see yourself in Erebus, I'd be worried. Yeah, I'd, I'd be, be quite worried. worried. Yeah. I'll have a look. I'll have a look into it. Like, and I, I'll I get just, back to you. I just think that like they, there are so many better like Chaos Legions or Chaos Warbands than were bearers. They like they just. Re- I just find them really, really boring. As what a, would, what would as you know, what would a word bearer fan as you know them? What would they say is the the reason that they like word bearers? They, they what, what, to, what do people like about them? They they're get red. To, yeah, they're, they get <laughs> it to, is a nice armor color. They, they, I'll say that they get to they get to summon a lot of demons. They they're very very in cahoots with a lot of the demon, demonology of of chaos, which is the thing. Like they do a lot of demons. That summoning. sounds quite cool. So it is that is that is the only saving grace for them. But but I'm sorry. That, that they that is the legion that spawned the first heretic, the arch heretic. You can't you can't give him any higher position than D. <laughs> and I will not be swayed on that. You swayed me on Emperor's Children, but <laughs> but I am not allowing them to pass. What what models do they have like like available? So what ones of this one of- was one that was included in Spirit, uh, because looking around there is some sort of out of print stuff. They're kind of floating around on yeah. the edges. Uh, but no current real, is no more just a color color. scheme situation. Yeah, they do have. I know we're talking forty k, but they do have two Forge World um, Horus Heresy, Horus Heresy Praetors. Obviously, Horus Heresy they've got quite a few different units and things. But the, I, I think yeah, it's a real shame that there were bearers. But I actually really like the the, the models, uh, the two Praetor models. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've painted those. The Terminator ones. The Terminator cool. one. Yeah, yeah. and that yeah, they're, 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 they they kind of remind me of the Thousand Suns one, and so he's got like a big like fire. Yeah. Fireball thing. Oh, right? I know that. Yeah, yeah. I know that model. They're, they're, yeah. They are. They, those models are cool. I'll give. I'll give them that. But other than that, I'll, I'll be honest. They're not like I don't know a lot about them. Um, well, that's I, good. Then we can just we can just vote for each other. That's I would, yeah. I would, D. Yeah. D. 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 Oh, look, I'm gonna get outvoted and put them in D. However, for any word bearers fans listening, uh, they don't sound all bad to me. I'm gonna do yeah. some looking up. No, I'll, I'll, I think the I'll say it. Cool. I'll say it. Worse than Raven Guard. Oh God! Uh, do you know what, George? I'm going to go with you on that one. Oh, that's. I would rough. rather paint a, a Raven Guard army every day of the week, twice on Sunday, than have anything to do with a Word Bearer army. Yeah, that's rough. That. They I'll can't that. be that bad. Oh, well, I tried. <laughs> um, oh no! Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say this, DC. If you're watching this, they would have been a C, but you dropped my Catachan army, so they're going to D. <laughs> um, who we got next? We have the Night Lords. Interesting one. Yeah, a great. Uh, they're they're brilliant. I love them. Uh, and they get that on the table right from the right from the get go. They have stop the, giving away your like. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to say. You're it, supposed like, to give us the pitch, and then right. we're supposed to discuss. Okay. Night Lords Primark is Night Haunter uh, Comrade Kurz, uh, a really really awesome Primark. Um, come from Nostromo, which is Nostromo, Nostromo, Nostromo. Um, that's the ship from Aliens. Nostromo. Just said three words that sounded yeah. the same yeah. to me. They I come from catch Nost- any difference. Nost- what they come? They come from Nostromo, Nostromo, Nostromo. Oh, yeah, that's that's it. It. yeah, it's so dark you have to say it three times. It's like New York, <laughs> yeah. New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> so it's a world that's shaded shaded in night uh, quite a lot, which is quite cool, as as in the background of them. Um, and and all of the marines, like the whole thing of the, that planet and that world where he kind of landed after being separated, is like there's a lot of like thievery, like crime. And I I, 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 I was love- going to say if you are hating on word bearers for apparently Erebus being such a horrible person, yeah, and then you are now going to praise night lords. Uh, and knowing the type of people or type of type of type of uh, marines out. and stuff that get ro- he, roped into that, um, yeah. But he, but the thing is, is he goes there. They're not so, exactly nice people. I don't think no, anyone on so this is go, nice people. He goes, he goes when he lands there. He he basically creates so much fear on the planet of him. Okay, and like he's combating a lot of crime and stuff that's happening, trying to do good on a planet that is ultimately a bad place. Um, he kind of like galvanizes and harnesses all the all the individuals on that planet for the greater good which is obviously the the great crusade in the beginning so you can say he kind of tries to wield that negativity in a positive hear me out, way Joe. hear me out Joe. they've got cool lightning on their armor yeah i, I was gonna I say know that, that. Yeah, yeah i mean i'll look you know i'll give them that yeah. I, I, I do think they're cool as well actually they're almost like a cooler uh they're a cooler take on you know you know how like the visual aesthetics of raven guard we were saying were like the gothic like yep. emo type thing this is like <laughs> a cool version of that yeah. like the raven guard one of it doesn't look cool. they're like uh, they're like raven guard if they were more into pyro <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i i i really really like um them as a, as a legion of warband i think they've got some there's some really really interesting characters like you've got sevatar you've got um unique units like atramenta the they've got the new kill team yeah the new kill team is yeah. amazing chainsaw skeleton man is amazing so yeah i mean uh, the that's the official name yeah um the, the aesthetics i'm i'm all on board with um i think they look great i'm a fan of uh Ride the Lightning by Metallica, so I know I'm, what I'm familiar album. with the Great album. with yeah. the aesthetic. I'm I'm uh, I'm all for it. But if we, if I never connected him, those dots. I don't know how I've never connected those dots. It's but, basically yeah. the same. It's literally just the it's same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Of, the, of that aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have like a little miniature James Hetfield. Yeah, I imagine album. that's what they they listen to. Um, imagine they're so they're, they're a fan. Just the re- ride the lightning plays as they come down on the drop pods. That's like, what you can imagine. That's what it. They yeah. yeah. But the thing, the thing ultimately for me that really made me. Uh, massively enjoy them as a as a as a as a force is the books by Aaron Dembski Bowden. So the the the, the trilogy, uh, all that first claw. Um I've that, not read any of their books to be fair. They're they're amazing. Like the books they're, they're really dark and there's a lot of bits in there that are obviously very fitting for for Hawley K. Um but I, I yeah the books the books uh, the first claw books or for the Aaron Dembski Bowden trilogy for the Night Lords is is just amazing. Like really well written. Um, and that kind of like made me fall in love with with the characters and the, the actual legion itself. So, so yeah, I, I, I'm gonna say this. I do think they are S tier. I do <laughs> do think they are S tier. How we, what we, um, where are we up with models that they have currently? Like 40k models. They won't have the, a 40k prime up model because he's dead. Yeah, they've got the the kill team, like you said. They had any other new stuff? I don't think so. Not don't for 40k. They no, they've got loads of heresy parts, which are great. They've got some really cool, different, like skull helmeted kind of like uh, heresy helmets and things. Um, they did have uh, metal models, like when I, when Games Workshop brought out the metal versions of each of the different cult troops. Um, they got their own squad with the famous, infamous bat ears. Um, <laughs> Ironically, we mentioned Metallica, but this is a bit more Avenged Sevenfold in the logo, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's, like I said, it's it's nice that they've got that new kill team because I think it does add that that flavour that's the that they've needed for the for the sort of stock Chaos Space Marine squad. Um, it's just a shame that obviously they won't get a forty k Primark model. Um, but uh, but yeah, I still think ah, that sucks to suck. Shouldn't have died. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, I Killed think uh, all the rubbish ones die, don't they? All the rubbish Primarchs. He knew skill issue. He, he knew he was, he, knew yeah. he was going to die as well because he could he could see the future. So he knew. So, that's even worse. That's even worse. You're saying S tier for the. It's definitely yeah. S tier. Oh, it's definitely same as Sanguinius, Joe. Knew he was going to die. Didn't do anything about it. Load of rubbish. That's right. called honor. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so um, so yeah. It's if, got an answer for everything. Yeah. It. So <laughs> when called, he does it's it, it's honor. But when he does it, it's just pure yeah. stupidity. That's fine. Yeah. I never said not, uh, uh, he was. Erebus he was is a horrible person. Okay. Legion made up of the worst people on the planet on, on all different planets. Oh yeah, they're great. I love them. Yeah. Okay. Well, what would you put them as then? Um. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't fight. I wouldn't fight the ST. I think they are like a they're they're one of the first ones that I think you find out about and go, oh, they're cool. They look cool or something like that. When you start looking at, chaos I think stuff. they're S tier just by based on lack of competition. If you ask me, yeah, 
going based off the yeah the list that we have. Yeah, I I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Sorry. I don't think there's many arguments. Zion's got to yeah. be S tier. Uh, they're definitely yeah. S tier. Definitely. Um. Yeah. We'll go up there. There you go. Um. Next up, Black Legion. These are, for me, the epitome of of what Chaos, Chaos is now in 40k. Um, and Ultramarines I've, in black. They, yeah, well, yeah, the you say, boys, you say the that, but they, they're the most regimented, like organized chaos. Obviously, like in the Eye of Terror, all the different after the after the Terror and obviously the Scouring, like they all went back to the Eye of Terror, and, and there was a lot of infighting between different legions in there. Um, and really, it was you know the return of Abaddon, um, reuniting obviously lots of different war bands and factions to a unified purpose of coming back out and obviously the black crusades. So you've got to take, you know, that's a lot of, there's got a lot of heritage as a, as a, as a war band or as a faction within the chaos ranks. And I think that again, saying it, saying it like the Aaron Dembski Bowden books about like Talon of Horus and stuff like that, those books for me, it really made chaos space Marines and, and black Legion feel more human. Like you just don't, you think of them just as evil or horrible or whatever, but like that book really helped kind of, for me, make them, way more relatable i think as 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 characters and as 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 miniatures and all of that um but you're quite right they are essentially the ultramarines of chaos which i think is is a good thing about them um the poster boys of, of chaos of chaos obviously abaddon the war master of chaos leads them there's some amazing other characters that are in there from the books like scandal kion um and other sort of like other like fire fist and other people like that that obviously are in are in the books from aaron Dembski bowden um but yeah i i absolutely rate them massively. If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. I think there's there's simply one word as to why they're S tier for me, and you've already said it, and that is Abaddon. Literally, great character, obviously. Yeah. The model, I just love the model so much. I think the model's great. And the their colour scheme overall, I think, is just solid. Yeah. What colour scheme? It's black. Black and gold. Ah. What do you mean? Nah, yeah. like it's a color scheme. Not really a color scheme. It's a color scheme. I think that the the thing I actually black like, and gold with like red spot colors and stuff for their like well, uh, uh, robes or whatever. I'll throw something we can't, into the we, mix. Right? No, 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 no. We can't bash on. If Raven Guard had gold trim, they'd look cool. All right, okay. Turn I'm them telling on. you now. Yeah, like, on, I'm, I'm telling you straight up. Like the, this is a benefit that the chaos stuff have is number one, it does just look cooler. That I, I, I prefer the armor to to normal space marine armor, having all the trim and everything just looks cooler um sorry sorry everyone <laughs> um i didn't it's not my fault um yeah i i think that is you know i'm always excited to see a new black legion box art model and see what see how it looks i guess they suffer health. from the same thing the ultramarine suffer from as it's like the default overexposure, oh, yeah. overexposure. I, i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna throw something in because this is something that's quite relative to me because i like black legion and i also like another one of the ones that we're going to discuss massively and I, I actually personally have a, a collection of a hybrid of both, which is a thing I think is really cool. Um, you ha can have cult troops like Thousand Suns, or you can have like de death, like Nurgle Marines or like Plague Marines that are in the black color scheme of Black Legion, but within that, that represent that part or that god or whatever. So, like for me, for example, um, like Hounds of Abaddon are uh, that's essentially corn space marines or what uh, uh, a world it is essentially world eaters, but within, within black Legion, like, and that for me is really interesting. So as much as you're saying, yeah, they're just black, but then it's almost the direct flip of that. It's using that black color scheme on some of the other miniatures. I'm sorry. I'm not having, Oh, it's just black. 
I'm not having that get through. I debunked that two seconds it's into just a bit bland. It. I'm not having it's that get through. Bland. It's not just black. If you saw, if you see a Black Legion color scheme, you know it's a Black Legion color scheme and it looks cool. That is true, yeah. Yeah, yeah fair. It's yeah. not just... It's not well, just I'm, black, I'm in it? agreement. I think that Black Legion are RS tier all day long. They are amazing. I think yeah. they're fine. Yeah. Do you know well, where, where would you, on your ideal list, where would you be placing them? Uh, probably give them like an A, B. Very flippant of you. <laughs> I'm just because you're putting them on this pedestal, and I'm just trying to bring it back down to reality. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, ignore what we're saying. Like, where, like what you would just put them? Would you put them in an A? Would you? Put, I right? think them. I think I quite like a black color scheme now and then. Yeah, I think they're quite cool models. I think it suits the chaos because they're more interesting. So the reason we bashed on the Raven Guard is because they're very, very bland. Yeah, but because they've got like because they're chaos marines, they're inherently more ornate in their armor, and they've got yeah. more visual interest, other things to work in there. Yeah, then it works. But I just painted the black legion model, so you know. Yeah, how did you find it? It's good fun. It's mm-hmm. nice, nice crisp, crisp black armor. The yeah. blue highlights. It looks great. It looks nice. It's, it's, a, it's a, it's a great. What, what color are we doing scheme. then? Is it going S or is it going A? I, it has to go S. I can't. It can't be next to. I'm, I'm happy for it to be S because I think they are that good. If you do want it in S, put it in S. It's fine. Yeah, yeah S too. I'm in control of it anyway, so I will. <laughs> where I want. Next up, Death Guard, Sons of Barbarous, the children of Mortarian, the Carrion Lord. What uh? What uh? What the nicknames are mad? Like to know all them off the top of his head. I don't. I I can remember. These are going to slip under the radar for the listeners who aren't like super well versed in uh, all the nicknames and whatnot. Yeah, cause... I do like Death Guard quite a lot. Good. I do. <sighs> I don't. I don't think they. For me, they've got a great model range. Just, just, just get that. The model range is fantastic. I think they were, they were the first, correct me if I'm wrong, they were the first to get like the rejuvenant treatment to get all the refresh. I that think they've had. that they just benefit from the fact of because they've had some of the best treatment, they've got some of the best models, therefore they're seen as one of the coolest chapters but, or warbands. But that's just because the other ones haven't had as much love. Well, I, I think the other thing is with painting, like you, there is a lot on them that you can you can do armor, you can do obviously all the wibbly stuff, like the tentacles, the like the pass and all that. I guess kind it of comes down to if you're lot. into all the you know Nurgle gubs on them, which yeah. I'm not. Personally. I think that I think also for for painting, they're quite a uh, quite a um, they're not so, so much an intimidating because you can have lots of fun painting them with different techniques and lots of if you're just starting painting, they're like washing models or like you know doing all that kind of stuff. You can do a lot of add a lot of value to them quite easily. So I think they're quite friendly for, for new painters as well, which is that want to experiment with like different techniques and things. I think they're quite good. Similar to what we were saying about um, said about orcs before. Yeah, I yeah, said that on, so. a, on, a, on something previously, and yeah, it's a similar similar thing. They were the f- first. One of the first things that I started painting when I when I got back into it, and I kind of loved them since. I think yeah. even like story wise, yeah, it's yeah. a very cool story, and mm. it's. An, I, I like a. I, I do like when they have like this specific, almost self contained story to these chapters and things like that. Like obviously stuff like Black Legion and Abaddon and stuff. It's like very broad, and and that he's involved in so much stuff. Um, and with the Death Guard, I think the the story with them, like how they become kind of diseased and how that was like, it was them, you know, initially trying to save, Multarian trying to save their uh, legion effectively and not realizing that or not necessarily knowing or, or caring that that's what that meant was to live in like permanent state decay. of decay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and to and to see that as a gift, um, yeah. yeah, I do quite like the color scheme as a concept. I will say I first like fell in love with it. It was specifically I can like really vividly remember it in the 2018, 2019 kill team. Uh, in the I was going that was when I was like quite new to painting. I picked that book up and going through there. There's like it, it literally like leaps out at you on the page because it's so vibrant. It's just like I'll put it up on screen for people. This like really awesome artwork. The color scheme like. I really gel with, but for me personally, all of the excessive, you know, tentacles and mm. pus and all that stuff is not for me. It's it's an aesthetic choice it's that's aesthetic gonna choice. gonna appeal to some people. I think it appeals a lot to like horror movie fans and yeah. stuff. A lot of people that are into like monster movies and, and yeah. things like that. I, can see, that. I see a lot of people do them. I initially started painting mine as more like almost like sea monsters, like sea creatures. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, kind of doing all the tentacles and stuff like blue and, and, oh, okay. and things like yeah. that and I, I quite liked that um, aesthetic to it because there is that sort of side of it as well where it's a lot of like you know the, the toxic pools and and, yeah, yeah. and the, so there is like a water element to their thing anyway um, 
I, I, I first liked them. I watched, I read, um, read the Eisenstein book, the heresy one. Yeah. There's a character in there called Gorgor who gets dies and then he gets brought back to life by Nurgle, like to fight, um, on, on the Eisenstein, um, uh, against Garrow. And, uh, I, that was the moment for me that I was like, yeah, they're really cool because, because like the, the, the they like, the unrelenting kind of they just keep coming which I think is something quite cool about them isn't Typhus in that book as Ty- well t- uh, Typhus or, uh, well, it was Typhon Typhon yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 and their back their backstory is, is really awesome as well I, I've got to say it's like as much as I do like them and I like the model range I think they've got a really diverse model range and like lots of different interesting things fun for painting etc they aren't for me like a top one, I think they, they're really high, but I don't think me personally. So I'm, I'm going to table that. That I, I think, <laughs> Sorry, I I think where this is going. I think they're either, I think they're a a tier for me. I would have said A as well. I personally, think I would say S. I would say S because I think that they are. I, I get that it's an aesthetic, a specific aesthetic that I think is going to throw a lot of people. But that's off the reason put a lot why of people I think. off. Yeah, but um. Also, Mortarian for me is the Mortarian coolest. Mortarian is probably the yeah, coolest. Yeah, but then Mortarian is the coolest Primarch. He is, yeah. yeah. Like, as in, like, the, 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 the in terms of the model, yeah, the model yeah. is the coolest one, yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 Like, Mortarian cool. I mean, I'm going to have to accept the feet on that one, but. Um, it's a high A. It's a high A. Yeah, you can put it, you can put it in front of uh, Thousand Suns. Yeah, go on. Kick, yeah, kick yeah. the Emperor's Children down. Yeah. Kick the Emperor's there children. we go. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we're going to do that, that's. Really there we go. Um, <laughs> uh, but I agree with that. I, think that, I, I <laughs> yeah, do agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, the next one, just because they're red, it's got nothing to do with them being red. I can tell you that for a fact. Like the to ne- put it to, as Dave would say, mini wargaming Dave. If you're gonna do chaos blood angels, it's gonna be the world eaters. Yeah. Yeah. The, no, uh, I think he said the other way around, didn't he? Yeah, but I'm flipping it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not as he would say that, is it? That's as he would say it. It, it was, no, no, he, was, he was saying it was the other way around. He was like, "Blood Angels are the closest. If you're gonna, if you're gonna not paint chaos, then you might as well paint Blood Angels because then it's like you're painting world." Exactly, Eaters. I'm it's doing this in reverse. Yeah, yeah, it applies. Yeah. It applies. Yeah, they World Eaters are amazing. Like, and I think the aesthetic, like the gladiatorial kind of like feel, Angron being this Primarch that just does not care about his children or his sons at all whatsoever. Like, um, they've got no psychers as well. They hate psychers. Like, I just think it's, they're just, it's a really cool aesthetic. Um, it could do with like a nice bubble bath and a cup of tea. Just uh, really calm yeah, down. Really, yeah. It? Yeah. Pampering weekend. Off yeah. to a spa. Angron at a spa. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice relaxing With jazz. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a candle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I do love, the world eaters aesthetic and just the corn aesthetic in general. I, love, I think yeah. if you're gonna, if it is chaos, then I'm. I want my demons to look like you know, big and demons, red, and the angry. devil. Yeah, yeah. like it, it. It fits, and it, I think it is. I think they almost should be the poster boys more than. More I, than I Black agree Legion, with you, yeah, personally, because I think if when you are getting into it, I remember hearing about like chaos and chaos demons and stuff like that, and that they weren't necessarily the first ones I saw. I might've seen like Zinch or something first. And I was a bit like, it doesn't look very like mm. scary to me. Like little bird, blue bird men. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, um, whereas like, this is like, oh, this is like the devil. Basically it looks like, yeah. like, uh, you know, classic kind of Lucifer type type thing. It's yeah. cool aesthetic. Um, I know we're not talking 30 K in this episode specifically, but they do have my favorite 30 K character series model. Mm-hmm. In Khan the Bloody. Yeah. Mm. It's a great model. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Khan the Bloody or Khan the Betrayer as a, as a character is probably one of my favorite chaos characters. Yeah. The 40k model, not as good. Yeah. I'm not into it in the 40k one. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, look, it's, it's not it's just old. It's, it's, old. it's not the worst model ever. I think he just, he looks a little bit drunk, like as if he's like staggering a little bit. Maybe he's a, the bloodlust has got to him. But but yeah, no, I, I think they've got some of the, Angon's an amazing character. Khan is an amazing character. Um, it, like I love him as a character in the 30k books where he's not this crazy maniac. Is he, is it Khan who gets like stamped by like a rhino in Galaxy of Flames and he's just he's like on, he's impaled on the front of a land raider? Yeah, yeah that's close yeah, enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anyone who survived, I, when you said rhino, that, I didn't think of the tank. <laughs> 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 I don't know why. Because imp- impaled as well. Yeah. On the dozer blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said, he said uh, rhino. You, it was obviously a, a razorback, did you just say? No, land raider. Land Raider. So Land Raider, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But like, I, I just thought of an actual rhino. Yeah. For some I mean, that, reason. That, that, I don't know why. That, that, that would be cooler. Yeah. yeah. But no, it gets impaled on the front. I mean, anyone who survives that, it, yeah. Maybe you get like an orc squig 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Would, yeah. yeah. You know. And I did, well, I heard you say it. I thought you meant actual rhino. You mean the gargantuan squig-off thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard you say it. I I thought of an actual rhino and I didn't think, no, that must be wrong. I just thought, oh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, must have. Yeah. 40K. Yeah. yeah. 40K. I, I, I think as as just... With the recent release that they've had with the new models like the Eight Bounds um, and obviously the new Berserker kit, I just think there's loads of really awesome things you can do with it. And as I said, like me personally, I don't paint them red. I paint them the Hands of Adam, so like the Black Legion Corn Berserkers, which I think are cool. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just think they're, they're, there's a lot of interest there. Like the, the story behind them, the way they didn't want to, be, Angle didn't want to leave the, the planet where he was when he was found. Um, there's just a lot of things about the, the just the models mm-hmm. and things. And I think from a painting approach to them as well, um, they're very interesting because they've got obviously all the trim like any Chaos models have got, but then you've also got the, I, I, what I love is when people have like, you see people do like the odd splash of the old white armor, um, you know, on, on them, for example, and things like that. Um, they've got a really cool old Dreadnought character uh, when they were called the Warhounds in the pre-heresy um, that, didn't want didn't want the nails and didn't believe in the nails and all that kind of stuff and saw his legion like he was trapped in a sarcophagus of a dreadnought and saw his legion descend into absolute anarchy you know like it, it just it's just a, they're really interesting like their fall from grace is quite interesting as a, as a as legion as well so so yeah i and i think i've got to say this as much as the mortarian model is great don't dare i think don't you dare i think the angron model is better that is a bad take. Yeah, no, that's no, not because true. It's because the it's, model it's represents- just not true. Because it's like it's. I, I said at the time. I remember, and when we were talking about like model of the year last year and everything, I didn't love the Angra model as much as everyone else. I do think it was it's a bit good. overhyped. I, I, think. I do think it's really good. Mm. Like I don't, I'm not by any means saying that it's a bad model. I think it's quite difficult to do a modern bad model for world eaters. It's always going to look cool. I think, um, but. Mortarian, no, like see, the Mortarian, like, Mortarian is great in my opinion, and again, it is just my opinion. Like, but I think when you think of the feel and vibe of the Legion, the aggression, the anger, the way that he is portrayed as a character, I think just the pose, like he looks so aggressive, and like it's got such a, an imposing uh, silhouette when you see it. Like, and also, I think we spoke about this before. Like, when you rotate the model there's multiple golden angles of the model, like from a painting perspective, like whereas Mortarian, it's really, it's quite, it's quite flat, like front on, like is the impressive part. And as you rotate the model, in my opinion, it doesn't have as many golden angles as more, as Angron. Angron, yeah, that's look at because it. Angron has more of a rounded pose where he's like hunched over. It's yeah. all kind of in line with, the, with each other, whereas yeah. Mortarian's yeah, obviously pointing his gun out yeah. or, or his um, scythe thing. Yeah. But I, I think, yeah, it's this, it's still still very cool. I think for me personally with World Eaters, as I said, like I really like the kind of um that kind of demon aesthetic. Yeah. And so I, I prefer I, I I would prefer a more like, you know, like some of like the bloodthirsters and stuff look like that kind of If I wanted to paint a dragon model, I'd get like some AOS Stormcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Give me some like cool armor that's, you know, been modified and that's why Mortarian's cooler for me. I don't want to paint some dragon demon thing yeah well no i think that's uh, no i'm talking about um yeah i'm talking about i would rather that than than because angron obviously doesn't necessarily look exactly like he, he's more armored and stuff isn't he yeah Ang- the angron model so uh, i would not, I the, would, not the mortarian not not them um, not the mortarian no he's like fully covered in armor mortarian mm. but yeah i get what you're saying i'm more getting at a point of like from a world eaters um aesthetic point of view i would prefer the Angron model if it was more just look like a devil demon oh, okay. thing. Fair Do you know enough. what I mean? Like I think that's the look I look would want from that more. But yeah. he is kind of armoured and yeah. And well he's gladiatorial. He's kept a lot of the gladiatorial. Yeah, yeah. Things, I get so, those yeah. reasons for it. And yeah. I just see it as like a bigger version of their um demon prince. No, see he's got a very similar pose to the 30k model. That's why the models relate quite nicely when you look at them. They've got that haunched kind of aggressive tucked in pose and you, that's why I really like it because it, it nods nicely to the 30k model and you can see the, the you can see the transition from hu- human, if you want to call it primarch human to demonic. Yeah. That's that's why I really like it. Come on then. What do we think it is? I, I know what I'm feeling. Uh, you know, I I would put- I would probably still put them in S tier, to be honest. Yeah, I probably we just a, bashed on them, me and Joe, but we're it's probably a bit of a, rating quite high. It's a bit of a... Bo- I haven't bashed on them. I, I bashed specifically on saying that Angron was a better model than Mortaria, because it's, it's not. But the uh, I, I think 
I, in I the mean, words, Dave, Dave would never forgive us. Yeah, he wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. If we didn't put it in S. Yeah. So I think I'm, I think I'm it's got it. in the words of Jim Carrey, it's got to squeeze right in the middle of Black Legion and, and uh, Night Lords like a glove and go go right in between. If you're happy, are you, is George happy with that? I guess we're gonna have to be outvoted. You are outvoted, but what yeah. would you want? I probably would have said A, but everything would be an A. You said yeah. You, yeah. Would you just not like any of it? That's all fine. <laughs> <laughs> Stick it, leave it where it is. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's it. That's the final list then. Yeah. Uh. Well, is there anything like just quickly, like, like a quick roundup of, of each of us? Was there anything that your personal list would look a bit different? Um, so James first. Or are you quite happy with what, where it was? I is? would probably uh, have put Empress Children above Thousand Sons for me. So it's just in, in a, a minuscule. In a minuscule. It would have been that. Yeah, that would have yeah. been like, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, now that we've built it, I probably would, looking at it now, I probably would have moved Iron Warriors down one mm. and then that would give me room to push maybe Emperor's Children or something down one. Fair. Um, Death Guard would be up as well. Yeah. But. Word bearers are at the bottom. Night Lords are at the top. That's word, me done. Word, 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 <laughs> word bearers I will be um, I will be doing some more research into just to, to clarify whether I think they're as boring as you two say they are. Nice. But until then, <laughs> I'm sure they, uh, uh, and that's quite on brand. Cause I'm sure they would appreciate me doing some reading and some research. So that is very much on brand. We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world class and award winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about. And we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Seed Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles and techniques, from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy-to-follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios question of the week time thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week if you have a question that you would like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast please leave it in the comments down below on youtube or if you're listening on audio uh, please fire us a dm on instagram at paint perspective podcast this question comes from pillars of adventure who says gents i have a question about a weird new experience i had this week i bought my first astra militarum sentinel and i was really looking forward to building and painting it I'm not new to the hobby modeling, but I didn't really enjoy the assembly process. And now that it's built, I'm underwhelmed and very uninspired to paint it. I could move on or persevere and paint this stupid laser chicken that I'm going to hate. <laughs> Any tips on how to get past this ugh phase in the process? Well, firstly, I've never heard anybody call a sentinel a laser chicken. That's the best description for it I've ever heard. I think specifically the new one. Yeah, yeah I can that get is, on board that with that. that absolutely, all I can imagine is one now covered in feathers. So, uh, <laughs> so um, in answer to the question, yeah, we've yeah, definitely been there before where you've built a model and it's been a bit arduous or, or you've had uh, haven't had the best experience with it. I think the best thing um, I would recommend for that for me would be to go and Google Images and look at loads of awesome versions of it painted. Um there's some really cool short stories that involve sentinels, like pilots, like like squadrons of sentinels that you can read. It's a Talon one, if I remember correct. I can't remember what it's called, but there's I'd find something that involves them that gets that get normally gets the gears going regarding painting it. Um, but yeah, like having a bit of a break, looking at other the, uh, looking at the model painted in the regiment that you want to paint it in is also a good way to do it, as I mentioned. But that's kind of how I would approach it. I always find that once a model, even if I don't like it, once it's primed and like airbrush base coated or however you do base coating once that like initial paint is on the model everything kind of levels out if you get what i mean like when you're looking at like bare plastic and you can't really like envision it even like after you've just like primed it all and it's all just once you just see it all one color yeah it's all like flat you're like okay like i can reset you kind of like tick the boxes like the build being finished because it's now like got paint on it it's like ready to go yeah, um, and especially, then seek out other inspiration, I guess. Especially if it's something armored like that, where your first base coat is going to basically do actually most do most of the work. You're going to look at it and go, 
Oh, I haven't actually got that much left to do. You you have, but you will yeah. feel like you don't have yeah. that much left to do. It's supposed like to a, be green and it's green now. Yeah, yeah. So I'm nearly there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I think also if you're really not feeling it, having a separate model on the go, just yeah. put, if you're not, we've spoke about it loads. It, with painting, kind of accept what you want to do in the moment and listen to that. So if you really don't, if you aren't excited to paint the Sentinel right now, have something else on the side that you are really excited to paint and you can flip flop between both of them. Cool. On that note, we will finish the episode right there. Thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. If you want to support the show, you can do so in a number of ways, but mainly we have a Patreon just for you podcast listeners. If you go to the description of this video, there's a link down there. You can support us over there. It helps us to bring you these episodes every week. If you cannot afford to do that, then we understand. Please leave us a rating or review on iTunes or Spotify. That would also help us out massively. And don't forget to engage with the video, like, subscribe to the channel, all those wonderful things. Thank you, everyone. We will catch you next week. 